Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Talk. My name is Nick Cosgrove and today I want to talk about supplements. I've been receiving quite a few questions lately with regards to supplements. People want to know which supplements burn the most amount of fat, which supplements build the most amount of muscle. A common question I'm receiving now due to COVID-19 is which supplements are best for my immune system? So I'm going to answer this question the same way I always answer this question. And first thing is, what's your diet look like? What's your training look like? And then I ask people, okay, what supplements are you taking? Um, when you're designing a supplement plan for yourself, you have to keep in mind that you don't want to just take everything under the sun. Okay. You don't want to just start walking into a supplement store and say, okay, well let the sales guy talk you into buying 30 different things. Because if you buy 30 different things, how do you know what's working? How do you know what's not working? So before you start your own supplement regime, you got to take a look at yourself and say, okay, what am I missing? Do I feel tired? You know, am I feeling lethargic throughout the day? Am I moody? Um, am I feeling weak? You know, uh, you know, am I, am I always getting sick, run down? Those are the questions I would be asking myself first. And, you know, another way I really, I always tell all my clients to do this is to get their blood work done. I say, you know, go, go to Life Labs, get your blood work done and have, take a look and see what you're deficient in. Are you deficient in iron? You know, what are your blood glucose levels at? Uh, know your blood sugar levels. These are things that you want to know before saying, well, I just need to take this, this, and this because so-and-so said so. So I wanted to go in today as to my supplement stack. And the reason I want to talk about my supplement stack is I actually had a client ask me during the Q&A what my stack is. And I thought, you know, I'm going to save that question for uh, today and make a short video talk about my supplement stack, but explain why I take each supplement. I'm not going to go through the benefits of each supplement. I mean, you could do a simple Google search and do that for yourself. But I want to explain the reasons why I take each particular supplement. Um, my supplement stack isn't fancy. You know, I, take, I think I take about, what, five or six different things. That's it. And those are the, the same things I've taken for years. Um, I, I treat my supplements like my diet. I don't like too much variety. If something's working, I stick with it. If it's not working, I get rid of it. There's plenty of supplements over the years that I've used and I've, I haven't noticed anything or I've noticed actually adverse side effects. I'm like, well, I'm going to get rid of that. So you got to really pay attention to your body and learn the science behind the supplements you're taking. So the first supplement I want to start off with today is something I've used for well over 20 years, vitamin C, okay? Vitamin C is pretty basic. Uh, I know there's a lot of doctors out there that'll argue and say it doesn't really do anything. I disagree. Very rarely do I get run down, do I feel sick. I attribute that a lot to good diet, but also the vitamin C that I take. Vitamin C does help uh, boost your immune system. It does help you know, if there's viruses that are around, it does help fight those viruses off. Uh, yeah, I know there's not many studies that show that, but for myself personally and for others that I know that take vitamin C on a regular basis, rarely do they get sick. Now, you can't take vitamin, if you're already sick, you can't just go to the store and take vitamin C. It's not going to fix you. It's not an antibiotic. But I feel that vitamin C does help keep the body strong and healthy. So it's something that I leave in all the time. For myself personally, I take about 2,000 milligrams a day. If I start to feel like I'm getting run down or maybe a little bit of a cold, I'll up that to 4,000 milligrams a day. Again, that's just me. Um, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to incorporate something like vitamin C into your plan. But I find, especially right now during a time like this, when we're more susceptible to viruses and diseases, I think it's a good idea to, you know, up that vitamin C. And vitamin C is cheap. It's not expensive. And yeah, it's a very basic vitamin, but it's one of my staples and one that I always leave in. One of my second supplements that I like to take, vitamin D. So vitamin D, I think I've been taking for probably close to 20 years as well now. Um, I've been living in Vancouver now for about two, you know, about two decades. So one thing I noticed living in Vancouver is we don't get a lot of sun. In fact, it rains like every second day here. We live in a rainforest. So one of the things about the sun is the sun does give us vitamin D, but no sun, no vitamin D. So before I took vitamin D, I would notice that my energy levels would crash, specifically uh, during the end of the day, like that late afternoon crash. I could take coffee, I could take stimulants, I could take pre-workout, but didn't really help. So then someone suggested to me, and I think it was another bodybuilder in a gym, of all people, suggested, why don't you try vitamin D? And I'm like, hmm, I never thought about that. So I go to the store, I got vitamin D, tried it for about two weeks. And I noticed slowly that my energy levels did start to rise. So I thought, well, is it placebo or is it the vitamin D working? So I thought, okay, I'm gonna take the vitamin D out and see what that does. So I take the vitamin D out and I did notice all of a sudden my energy levels started to drop again. So I thought, 
ah, okay, so maybe it is the vitamin D. So I put the vitamin D back in and I found a certain amount that worked well for my body type. And for me, that was 3000 IU a day. Uh, I'm a fairly active person. I usually get up about five in the morning. I go to bed usually at 11 at night, 12 at night sometimes. So I'm up for a long period of time. So I need a lot of energy. Uh, I'm not a big coffee drinker. I don't rely on stimulants to keep me awake and to keep me energized. So I found that vitamin D has worked wonders for me. Uh, it's something I do recommend to most of my clients, especially my clients who are feeling really drained and have low energy and are constantly sipping on coffees and espressos and Americanos. And I say, you ever tried vitamin D? And they look at me like, what, what's that? And again, it's a cheap supplement. It's, it's a really, really easy supplement to take. I mean, they come in little tiny pills. So if you don't like the swallowing pills, I use are easy to take, easy to swallow, and they do work well. As far as dosage is concerned, you got to play around with that. I personally wouldn't recommend exceeding more than 4,000 IU a day. Uh, like I said, 3,000 is more than enough for me, and you know I'm 220-something pounds, so I'm a big guy, and that's more than enough for me. For me, sorry. Uh, my third supplement that I like to use, apple cider vinegar. Now, I actually like to take apple cider vinegar in pill format. Okay, We talked about this on the Q&A earlier this week. Robin likes to take it in vinegar. Uh, I prefer, to, or not vinegar, she likes to drink it. I, I don't like drinking it. I think it tastes nasty. It's also not that great for your teeth, so I decided to take it in tab format. Despite what most people think, apple cider vinegar is not a probiotic, it's a prebiotic. So it does do wonders for your gut health. That It can definitely help with gut health. I've had some people I work with who have IBS, um, Crohn's place, who have taken apple cider vinegar and they've noticed it does help them. But the reasons I take apple cider vinegar is actually to keep my blood sugar levels low. After one show one year, my sugar cravings were through the roof. And I was constantly craving sugar during the day, in the morning, at night. And I'm, I'm not a big sugar person, but I was constantly craving it. So I knew my blood sugar levels were out of whack. Uh, sure enough, I went and got my blood test done. And yeah, my blood glucose levels were, they were going nuts. So I figured, okay, well, I got to do something about this because I can't have low blood sugar levels and high blood sugar levels. I can't be having my blood sugar levels fluctuating throughout the day. So I read up about apple cider vinegar and the benefits started taking it, didn't notice anything at first. And I would say probably about three weeks in, my blood sugar levels really started to stabilize. I wasn't craving sugar throughout the day, I wasn't craving it at night. And I was taking the apple cider vinegar two tabs in the morning, two tabs at night. And that was actually quite a bit at that point, that was 2000 milligrams. So I thought, well, this is actually working, but I said, I don't wanna take this many pills. So I backed off. I took 500 in the morning. I took 500 at night. And that seemed to work really well for me. Uh, it seemed to balance out my levels really good. Got my blood work done again, and everything came back and everything was stable. Now, I'm not saying that the apple cider vinegar stabilized my blood sugar levels. I'm just suggesting that over time, though, it really got my controlling, uh, my, my cravings, sorry, under control. So I think that helped, which really brought my levels more stable. So this is something that I've left in for the past, I want to say, five, six years. And another thing I, I don't plan on taking on my stack. Okay. So that's my third supplement that I take. Fourth supplement that I take, omega-3s. Uh, again, I'm not, I think I've talked about this on a previous q and I don't consume that many fats in my diet. I'll do a little bit of peanut butter, a little bit of salmon, but I'm not a big fat guy. Um, so what I find, and what I mean by that is I'm not into healthy fats as much as most people. I put healthy fats on people's diets all the time. I'm just more of a carb guy. So my fats are usually just peanut butter, as I mentioned, and occasionally some eggs here and there. So for myself personally, I know because my fats are low, I need to supplement with some omega-3s. Fats are essential, remember, for your brain, just for your overall body function, for your skin, for your overall health. So omega-3s are something that I've left in for probably the past, I wanna say 10, 15 years again, uh, there's something that I supplement with. I don't give them to everybody. I don't tell all my clients to supplement with omega-3s. Again, it depends on their diet that they're on. But I also find for cholesterol levels, uh, my family has a high uh, a history of high cholesterol levels. So I find that you know taking omega-3s help lower those cholesterol levels. And even with a diet like mine, which is fairly clean, that's usually something that's passed on through genetics. So I'm aware of that. So I thought, you know, I'm going to incorporate those omega-3s in and they work really well for me. I feel really good taking them. I also like to take them in gel, gel cap. Let me show you one here. It's just easier to swallow. Uh, they are pretty big tabs there. Okay, you can see they're pretty big. Uh, they're 1,000 milligram tabs. So I'll usually take about two of those a day. That's usually more than enough for me. My third supplement that I like to take, uh, BCAAs. BCAAs, in my opinion, 
are not essential. Okay. Branch chain amino acids. I know there's a lot of trainers out there that swear by them and tell their clients, you need to have branch chain amino acids. I'm not one of those trainers. I like that particular product. I'm going to be honest with you just for pure flavor. I drink a lot of water. I drink close to, you know, six liters of water a day. Drinking water to me is boring. I want my water to taste good. So I picked up a product and most BCAs that you buy, the powders do have a flavor, but you want to make sure when you're buying a BCA powdered flavor that you're buying something that's sweetened with stevia or sweetened with a little bit of sucralose. You don't want to overdo it on sucralose. We know sucralose is not good for us. So look for a product that is mainly sweetened with stevia and then, you know, it makes drinking water more enjoyable. Uh, BCAs, they don't hurt you, but again, they're not necessary. So if I had to take one supplement out of this stack, it would definitely be the BCA powder. Okay. Again, this is just for my own enjoyment. It's not something that I find is crucial for my stack to work wonders for my body. The last supplement, and I do call it a supplement because I don't, anything that's not a whole food, I consider to be a supplement. So whey isolate. Okay. You notice that says hundred percent whey isolate. There is a difference and I can't stress this enough. There is a difference between basic whey and whey isolate. Okay. One of the main differences is the price. You'll notice when you go to most supplement stores that a whey isolate costs about a good $20, $30 more than a basic whey. There is a reason for that, okay? Uh, it's the quality of protein you're consuming. So this is one thing you don't want to cheap out on. When you're buying a good, when you want to buy a good protein powder, I always suggest, you know, you're going to have to pay a high, higher price. Okay, now I, I don't want you paying like, you know, $150 for a bottle of whey, but at the same time, you have to make sure that the product you're taking is good quality. So basic whey, the reason why that's not good, it's full of dairy. You know, you're going to be sitting on the toilet and sorry, but you're going to be shitting your brains out. You're not, your body's not going to absorb most of that protein. A good whey isolate, it's pure, it's concentrated, digests really easily. I even have some clients who I train who are lactose intolerant that can actually handle a whey isolate protein powder. So you want to get a clean source. I always talk about getting my supplements from Costco. Um, again, I, I like going, I don't find that you have to go in some more expensive to buy your supplements or you have to pay, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars for, you know, the supplements. If you just read the labels and read what's in the ingredients, you can find good stuff for cost effective prices. Okay. So that's basically my supplement stack, uh, a good way to isolate some BCA powders, um, uh, omega threes, apple cider vinegar, vitamin C, vitamin D. Next thing I want to talk about though is food. If you are on a budget, You've got to look at your diet first, okay? I can't stress this enough either. It's, I see so many people wasting their money on supplements and then I look at their diet and I'm like, what are you eating? You have to look at your diet before you look at your supplement stack, okay? If you are on a budget, you've got to budget accordingly. So what I mean by that is get your food first, you know, get your omega-3 eggs, Get your natural peanut butter, get your avocado, get your salmon. Those are your fats right there. Okay. Get your brown rice. You know, you can have a little bit of white rice if you like. Get your quinoa, get your sweet potatoes, get your yams, get your oatmeal, get your uh, cream of rice. Those are your carbs. You know, then you look at proteins. You can get chicken breast, you can get cod, you can get tilapia. You know, uh, those are meat sources. If you're a vegetarian, you can go for tofu, you can go for soy, you can go for egg whites. Those are your proteins. Okay. Once you get all of those in and they're, you know, they're in your diet plan, you've got everything packed away in your fridge, your meals are all prepped. And hey, if you got a few bucks left over, then look at your supplements. And again, which supplements do you need? Which ones work for you? Okay. Not for Joe Blow or not for your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Which ones work for you? Best way to get that done? Blood work. Okay. Second way is pay attention to your body Okay, see how your body is feeling. Like I said, I took the vitamin D because my energy levels were feeling really low throughout the day. I took the vitamin C and I continue to take both of these because I believe it does strengthen the immune system. Okay. I can't, I don't even remember the last time I took a sick day. I, I don't even think I've ever took a sick day, uh, knock on wood. Um, and I do attribute a lot to good supplementation, but also good diet. Okay. So that's, that's number one diet before supplements all day, any day. Um, and as far as branding is concerned, be very careful. I mean, there's, Rob and I talked about this on the channel the other day about isogenics and you go back to our Q and a that we released this week. We really went into them. I do not believe that you need to spend high amounts of money on name brand supplements. Okay. Uh, Jameson's is a good name brand. It's good cost effective, but it's not over the top. 
Okay, Kirkland is another good brand. Again, they're not asking for a crazy amount of money. They're cost-effective supplements. You know, and I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just saying that these are very cost-effective products and they're good quality products. Okay, so when you're looking at your supplements that you want to purchase, make sure you're not getting you know ripped off. Make sure you're getting good quality ingredients, but also at the same time, you know, you have to watch your budget. Anyway, that's my supplement stack today. Uh, that's all I got. Thanks for listening to me. Hope it helps. If you have any questions, send them to me. My email is nick at foreverfitperformance.com. That's nick at foreverfitperformance.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks so much and uh, have a great day. Thank you.